Hey VC students, welcome to another video of Hawkshiring. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I would just like to go through a topic video um, explaining the differences between local minimums and maximum and absolute minimums and maximums. So minimum, maximum questions happens or occurs in two different sets. Um, some questions would ask you to find the local minimum or maximum. Um, and some other questions might ask you to find the absolute minimums or maximums. So you need to be able to, you know, in an exam scenario or in a test scenario or just doing general textbook questions, um, you need to be able to distinguish the differences between these because the answers differs between these two um, questions or these two types of questions. So I'll just start explaining the differences between these two um, using a simple tree diagram. So you have two different types. You have the local and you have the absolute, um, obviously minimums and maximum, okay? Now, what exactly is a local minimum and a local maximum? So these is these maximum minimums are the ones you've been doing so far, okay? So, you know, you've been, you've been differentiating, um, you've let that derivative equal to zero and then you solve for it. So these are your turning points, essentially. So that's your local maximum. And then this over here would be your local minimum. So what I like to think of local minimum maximums are your turning points. So it's, that's a very simple term for that, okay? So that's a local minimum maximum. Now, what about an absolute minimum maximum? So in this case, um, absolute just means the absolute maximum just means the highest point on the graph. It might be a maximum turning point. So, you know, one of these. But at the same time, it can also be just one of the endpoints. So for example, if I have a graph, maybe a cubic, and it looks something like this, for example, the local maximum would be this point right here. So that's the turning point. But the absolute maximum is this point right here. See, this point is an endpoint. Let's just treat it as an endpoint. And it is the highest point on your graph. So it is higher than your maximum, um, well, your local maximum. And therefore, this point right here is what we consider the absolute maximum. So think of absolute maximums as the highest point of the graph, no matter where it is, okay? Um, and then similarly, in absolute minimums, um, you have here the local minimum. The absolute minimum is just the lowest point on the graph. So if you end points, you know, you find the point on the graph, wherever it is the lowest point, which is this end point right here, then that is considered the absolute minimum, okay? So as you can see in this cubic shape that we've got right here, there's already, you can already distinguish the differences between a local and an absolute minimum slash maximum. One other thing to note as well with these absolute minimum maximum questions is your absolute minimum and maximum can only occur at two um, locations, either at the turning points, so one of these points, or at the end points, okay? So one of these points. So your absolute maximum or minimum can only occur at those two locations because um, it can never occur in between any of these points. So let's take, for example, we have a point right here. Um, even though it's lower than this local minimum, there's always a point, which is what you consider the end point, which would always be lower than that, um, than, you know, the point in the between. So that's why your, your absolute minimum maximums can only be either at your endpoints or, you know, in some instances, if um, your graph maybe looks something like this, um, for example, then in this case, the absolute maximum would occur at your local maximum as opposed to this endpoint right here or that endpoint right there. Okay, so it's essentially just look at your graph, determine where's the highest point. It's very simple. It's pretty clear. Okay, so guys, now that you know the theoretical concepts of the differences between these two um, locals and absolute maximum minimum, I'd like to go and apply this concept, see how we can apply that mathematically. Okay, and jumping into a question, I've got one simple one right here. It is a cubic, um, which is generally what you will see for absolute minimum and maximum questions, um, because these have, you know, multiple sets of turning points and also You've also got the endpoints given to you over here in as part of the function. So let's have a read. You've got a function with a domain uh, that is between negative half to two inclusive, and the graph is shaped by this equation, two x cubed minus six x squared. And our goal is to find the absolute maximum and minimum. So not the local maximum and minimum. So we're not asked to find the turning points. 
um, absolute could be the turning points, but we need to check the endpoints as well, okay? So let's have a look at this first. The first thing you want to do with these type of questions is get a general idea of the graph, right? So what does this graph look like? Well, it's a quite simple one, and I'm just, you can just do a rough sketch, you know, y equals six, uh, 2x cubed minus 6x squared. If you were to simplify this, you get 2x squared, x minus um, 3. And just from looking at this, um, when you're looking at your graph, you can already tell what the x-intercepts are. So in this case, if you let y equal 0, you get x-intercept equals to 0. Um, and x-intercept, the second one is x equals to 3. So if you let this equal 0, you can solve for x, um, the x-intercept. Now, the special part here is your 2x squared. Um, this is what you call a quadratic cut or the x-intercept here is actually a turning point. So when you have a square um, and you let that equal to zero, then the intercept becomes a quadratic cut, okay? So what I mean by quadratic cut is it's actually a turning point at that intercept. Um, and then x minus three, that's only to the power of one. So then you call that a linear cut. So um, it just your line just essentially just crosses the x-intercept. Um, and we'll see how that applies over here. This is a positive cubic, so the shape looks something like that, okay? So we're just going to draw that. Um, it must start low and then end high. So starting low comes over here. And remember, I said we said this was a quadratic cut, so it means it crosses it at a turning point, okay? Just like that. And then it has to come back down because it's a turning point. And we don't know how low, how low it goes. We'll find that eventually, but just know that it will reach a bottom um, at some point, and then it'll have to come back up. Now, when it comes back up, when it touches the three, uh, this is a linear cut. So it's to the power of one only. So it just crosses it normally, just like that, okay? So that is a rough sketch of your graph. Um, we know this turning point, pretty obvious, zero, zero. Now we want to find this turning point, right? We know it's, um, you know, it's some x and y value in between zero and three, but we want to be specific. So how do you find the turning point of a graph? Well, you derive it just like what we've pretty much been doing so far. Um, you derive it, dy dx. If you were to derive this, um, you bring the power down, minus power by one, six x squared minus 12 x. Um, you let the derivative equals to zero, and then you solve for x. So in this case, you can simplify 6x or you can factorize it out and you get that. Well, and then you let each of the components equal to 0. So x equals 0 or x equals to 2. We already got the part that is 0. Um, so that's good. That means our answers or our factorization seems good. Um, and then the second part is x equals 2, which is also good because we know it has to be between 0 and 3. So we know the x turning point is 2. And if we want to find the y turning point, well, we know this is 0, pretty clear. And then when x equals to 2, y, you just sub x equals 2 back in there. Um, so we just sub it in. So 2, 2 cubed minus 6, 2 square. And you'll get 2 times 2 cubed, which is 8 times 2, 16. Minus um, 2 square, which is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. And you get negative 8. So your turning point, your local minimum. So we've just found the local maximums and local minimum, okay? So local max over here. Um, and I might just use a different color, actually. Local max over there. And then this is called your local minimum. All right. So now that we know our local maximum and minimum, um, we can then proceed to find the absolute max and minimum. And how do you do that? Well, like I mentioned before, you need to know the endpoints, okay? So look at these endpoints first. Are they um, higher, at least for local maximum, are they higher than your local maximum? Um, and for your minimum, absolute minimums, are your endpoints, you know, is it lower than your local minimum? So this is where you consider this range right here, negative half and two, okay? So what I do is we just need to find the y values of these um, points. So I would sub in, sub in x equals to negative half and let's um, into obviously the function fx so in this case if i was to use the proper terminologies it's f bracket negative half and we sub in negative half into our equation over here um, and if we to 
expand this, you get 2 times negative, um, well, 1 over 2 to the power of 3, that's negative 1 over 8. So 2 times negative 1 over 8 minus 6 times, well, negative half square, that's 1 over 4, positive. And then you get negative 1 over 4, let's simplify that, minus 6 over 4, and you get negative 7 over 4. Okay, so we know that at negative half, your y value is negative 7 over 4. So at the end point, negative half, your y value is negative 7 over 4, and negative 7 over 4 is not lower than negative 8, right? So negative half, I'm not sure where it is. This graph is definitely not to scale. But we know that the end point occurs somewhere here. Um, the more imp important part is the y value is negative 7 over 4, so it's not lower than negative 8, okay? So ignore that part, that's not needed. This is your end point of the graph, which is good. So now we're starting to see a picture, a very clear picture, okay? So let's find an, the second end point and then we'll be done with this um, question. And then onto the second end point, previously this number I put was two. Um, it should not be two, it should be four just for the purpose of this video. So in this case, we sub in so in this case, we sub in x equals to 4, um, put it in there, and you get 2, 4 cubed minus 6 to the, uh, times 4 to the power of 2. Um, 4 cubed is 64. It's already a very big number. 64 times by 2 is 128. And then 4 squared is 16. 16 times 6. Well, we can do a quick maths over here. 36, and you get 96. And then 128 minus 16, 8 minus 6 is 2, and we get 32. So we know when um, y equals to 4, I don't know, when x equals to 4, we get our y value being 32. So a very big number, somewhere off, um, very high up there in the graph. So now that you've got all your points, you can clearly see which one is your minimum, um, absolute minimum, and you can clearly see which one is your absolute maximum. So to answer or to fin finalize the question, absolute minimum now when they say absolute minimum they're just actually asking for the y value okay um they can the question you have to read the question very carefully so if the question asks you for you know the point of the absolute minimum then you give the coordinate um, but if they're just asking for the absolute minimum then what they're asking for is just the y value so in this case find where the lowest point in the graph is it is quite evident it's right here at the local minimum so absolute minimum in this case is actually equals to local minimum, and that is equals to negative 8. Now absolute maximum, again, find where the highest point is on the graph, and over here it is at 432, so the absolute maximum is 32. So um, not the local maximum, it is actually just what at the end point. So yeah, you know, you can have an absolute minimum at a local turning at a turning point and an absolute maximum at an end point or vice versa it can happen um, the best way to do these questions is make sure you just get a rough sketch of the graph and then determine your turning points find the points the y values as well and then find the end points and then just compare them okay and it's usually i find it easy when you put on a graph um, so you can clearly tell where your points are and how high or how low they are okay guys that is pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to go through the differences between local and absolute minimum slash maximum. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please leave a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. I will try my best to get on top of that. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.